Hello, everyone. This is Tanya, her, your holistic cancer wellness specialist, and we, we are here on Power Pantaloons podcast. Today, we have Danica with us. Hello, Danica. You're muted. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> yes, I wanted to make sure I wasn't interrupting. No background noise. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Why don't you tell the audience what it is you specialize in? Sure. So I am a life coach. And what I specialize in is helping women heal the relationship with themselves. And so I like to kind of call myself a confidence coach, really doing a deep dive into that inner work to shift your identity, which is about mindset, emotions, and behaviors, and helping you make the transition into your next chapter of life, who you really are expressing that confidently. Um, so the real work though, is that inner work, the deep dive. Fantastic. I, as, as you may or may not already know, I love confidence work. I love mindset mindset. As far as I'm concerned is the most critical piece when you're doing any kind of work, because your mind is not in the right space. Whatever it is you're attempting to do is, is less likely to succeed. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I'll just throw a little something onto that, something that I like to share with people. When we talk about that identity shift and that thought work or that mindset work, like you're saying, it's like somebody who wins the lottery, but has been poor their entire life. So has that kind of mindset. And then suddenly they come into large sums of money and then it's gone because the internal shift of who that is and learning to embody that and become that was not done. Uh, I, you know, I'm just yeah. throwing that out there because that's such a common example. We see lottery winners or, you know, basketball players, huge sums of money, and then suddenly it's all gone. Right. With the lottery winners, it's something like 95% of them or something ridiculous like that end up bankrupt within like two years. I'm not sure exactly the numbers, so don't quote me on that, but it it, yeah. it is, it, you know, you, you would think that the first thing that they would do is, 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 uh, contact, a, a financial specialist or, or I don't know, like make a list on, on how to maintain that money and grow that money as opposed to buy all the cool little trinkets and toys <laughs> yeah it's like it's like the awareness though I think probably like for you right in your own journey I suspect you can tell me where I'm wrong but these major shifts in identity because of a sudden illness a job loss whatever it is and if you you don't know what you don't know yeah. So how do you, you know, it's really, if you don't know, if you just think, hey, I, it's different now, but you don't have all of the pieces, the mindset work, how do you, how do you ask for help if, you know. You, you, we could have a long conversation <laughs> about how, how there should be some sort of uh services that go along with winning but like that's not anything related to this podcast <laughs> but but it's a fascinating conversation we could have at another time um yeah i believe that we were going to talk about intuition and for me specifically intuition is what saved my life i'm going to talk about that for just one moment here and i just knew there was something wrong with my body and the blood work was fine. The pap smear was fine. All the, all the stuff. And my gynecologist is like, we've done all of the testing. The only thing we haven't done is a DNC. And so it literally took a DNC to find my cancer. And when they removed my cancer, it was over 10 pounds of, of cancer from my body. And it was, there were no indications other than I knew something was wrong and pursued it. Yeah, I think um, that's such a, you know, powerful story. And if it's okay with you, like I would 
like to kind of go back and forth about that intuition because and what that is and you know how do you tap into it and um yes. share that with you know yourself like let's do it live as an experiment and then maybe you know your audience can pick up from that that'd be amazing um, so like my first question to you based on what you said is so then how would you define intuition the feeling inside your either chest area or gut area that something isn't quite right. I love that. And, and I would say, I agree with you 100%. And I would add that, you know, people will define intuition as kind of the unconscious mind processing at a higher speed, being able to recognize patterns that the conscious mind cannot recognize. And I think, yes, it is that, but I think it's also, like you said, being in your body and also that direct connection to the divine higher self, whatever you want to call it, but just recognizing that connection is there. And I agree with you that the awareness centers, the gut, the heart and the throat. And you talk about like a chakra system, but I don't want to get all lost in, in off track, but that is the awareness center. So like, if it's okay with you, I want to, like I said, kind of play a little game and have a little bit of fun here. Sure. So sure. I want to, I want to ask you just a couple quick questions. We'll do just a quick demonstration of um, okay. intuition. And I want you to just answer off the top of your, your head. Okay. 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 The truth is. I know what I need. Mm, I know what I need. The truth is. I am enough. The truth is. We are all divine. Hmm. Okay, one more time. The truth is. We create our own reality. We create our own reality. Okay, so next then I just kind of want to shake off that energy, literally shake it out of the body. And... I then want us to come into our body so if we can take, yep, you're already on it. Take a few <laughs> deep, deep breaths. I love that. And as you know, breathing um, from the belly help calm, calm, calm. So I'm going to breathe with you if we breathe in for four. And breathe out. And if you can feel your feet on the floor. I'm going to close my eyes. That's just very natural for me to do. I'm going to take my shoes off so I can touch the hardwood floor. Okay. So I just want you to feel, you know, notice the, are your feet hot? Are they cold? What's the sensation there? Floor is cool. Okay. And I just want you to be in your, I'm just saying this out loud to kind of help guide you and guide me to get in my body. And I want you to feel your seat in your chair, be a feel your hands, relax your shoulders and relax your jaw. Always the hard piece. <laughs> Just so I went there. And if it's okay with you, Tanya, I want to take you back into two experiences um, in your life to kind of and really create this awareness, not only for you, for myself, and also for your audience. Is, is that okay? Of course. Okay. So the first thing I want you to think about again, now we're being in your body, feel your feet on the floor, feel your hands, relax those shoulders. And I want you to think about an experience from your past 
that you knew wasn't right for you. So it could be a person, a situation, a location you were at. And I do not want you to go to your worst experience, but just something, you know, you didn't like. And I really want you to drop back into a particular scene related to this experience. And I want you to remember what you see, what you hear, any noises or sounds, what you felt, literally things you were touching, and maybe smells. And once you are in the scene and you are able to experience all of those sensations, I want you to turn your awareness inside your body. And when you have that, I know I'm a fast talker. So if I need to slow down, please just tell me. You're good. I want you to describe to me the sensations you are experiencing in your body from that scene. Cold, and my tummy is all churny, and I'm nauseous, but I'm sweating, and uh, I'm scared. Okay. And... If you had to give these sensations that you are experiencing in your body uh, a, a physical name, what would that be? Stress. Stress. And if you rated this on a scale of one to excuse me, negative one to negative 10, to negative 10 being the worst, what would you call, what would you name this? Probably a negative four or five. Okay. So you have the name stress. And when you say that word or think it in your mind, Tell me what's the physical sensation in your in your body as a phrase. Nausea. Okay. Okay. Now we're out of there. So I want you to open your eyes and shake that off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I'm glad that you went with something like a negative four and five and not to something super extreme. It was a car accident when I was young. So okay. I was I was scared out of my mind because it was like my first like car accident. I didn't know how that was gonna work. I you know and it it lit I literally just bum tapped the guy in front of me. Like okay. but I was 18, 17, I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, you've got the sensation so so <laughs> clear and like, that's great because that for me tells me that you are very aware of what's happening in your body. That connection is there for you. And that's so, so important. So, all right, now we're going to go to the other extreme. So again, kind of shake out that negative energy, breathe deeply, come back into your body, feel your feet on the floor, relax. <laughs> If you just sit back in your chair, feel your hands, and relax your jaw and your shoulders. And then we're going to go to the opposite. So I want you to think about an experience that was right for you. So again, this is someplace you went, somebody you connected with, um, you know, time spent with a pet, 
could be anything. Yeah, you here, can't you? No, actually, I, no. Uh -uh. I just love animals. So um, <laughs> that's why I went there. But anything from your everyday life that you just know um, is exactly right for you and drop into a scene again. And I want you to, you know, think about what you see, what you hear, okay. what you can smell, and what you can touch. And I'm forgetting my fifth sense right now, but if you, re <laughs> you remember, when you're in the scene and you have all the senses, the sight, the smells, what you can touch, I want you to, again, turn that awareness inside of your body and tell me about the sensations you are experiencing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's butterflies. It's... Um... Having to pee, but not really like that, like adrenaline sensation. Um, um, it's it's bouncing. <laughs> where bouncing, where is bouncing? Where is the sad in your body? I, like my 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 center, my center. Okay, so you mean like from uh, chest to gut, like that? Yeah, area? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. My 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 entire torso. Yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else? So it smells like sunshine. Mm -hmm. So if you were to name these sensations and that experience, what would you call that? What phrase would you use to describe those sensations? Achievement. Achievement? Achievement. Okay. I've been working towards something and I got confirmation this afternoon, actually, that I, I'm getting what I have been working towards. I can't talk about it yet, but oh, super excited about it. Okay. Okay. So, and I, I just did this so short, but I basically want to do, so you've got the, the contrast and experience, right? This how you felt in your body, a situation that is not right for you and vice versa, how you felt when a situation was right for you. And the idea is that awareness to understand that your body is more aware than your conscious mind. Your body processes, I believe it's like 11 billion, excuse me, 11 million pieces of information per second. Whereas the conscious mind is like, 5 million, and I could be completely wrong, but it's about those exact numbers, but it's drastically different. The body is way more aware. Um, and so the idea then with intuition is using the body that your body always knows because your body is always present in the moment. The mind tends to wander to the future and to the past and is not present and sometimes misses key information. So if you think about using your body as like a compass, when it comes to making decisions or even mindset work, let's frame it exactly as that, that when we get in places, for example, where we feel really fearful or afraid about a change that's coming or something we would we didn't see coming, right? And it creates this uncertainty to check in with your, with your body. And this is what I've discovered. Do this for yourself. Make sure it works for you. Is that when we are on our right path, there will be a sense of opening and expansion, relaxation, light. People use different words, but it's this relaxing in the body. And that when we are not following the path that is right for us or something, you know, we need to be suspicious, there's like a tightening and a tense in the body, 
and a contraction, um, uh, getting small, um, literally a physical reaction. And so the idea then to apply this in a very simple way is to think about, you know, your to-do list, something that you, you know, look at your to-do list and checking in with your body and imagine yourself doing the task and just seeing what's happening inside of me. That's amazing. That's amazing. I I would love to talk about like the development of the relationship because the more you use the intuition, the the more it's there for you. Mm-hmm. And I sort of stumbled across it by accident, right? Um, we're we're gonna talk about car accidents again, right? So driving somewhere and I got this feeling that I should go a different way and I ignored it Mm -hmm. and then ended up in a car accident a minor one right but like but I remembered that I had had that feeling and I was like hmm so the next time that feeling popped up I honored it and just turned and went a different way so now I don't know if I like but every time that feeling turns up, now I pay attention to it. So like, it's not even conscious anymore. Like it just like, sometimes I'm like, oh, why did I go this way? Like, and because <laughs> it's a different. And, and then I think back, oh, I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So when you th- like using your words, when you, that feeling, where is that for you in your body? It's my gut. Mm-hmm. It is my gut. Mm-hmm. And is that just, I'm curious, going back, you know, how you described that um, initial car accident? Is that that churning in the tummy? No, it like, it, it was just like a the uneasiness. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really know how to describe the feeling, mm-hmm. but it only happens when my body is telling me to do the thing like so yeah like yeah. I, I I have no actual description for it I like I would be very hard pressed to describe it but it is a specific feeling that only occurs for this function okay so you asked you know, or said that you would want to talk, uh, have a conversation about how to develop it and how, you know, so I'll answer the question. And then of course I want to answer or ask you a question as a follow-up, like what I, my own process, I think there's many ways to, to get to it, right. To be in tune with how you're feeling and your intuition. For me, I got a few practices and one of them is sitting in silence making the time to just be, not always doing. Another thing that I find extremely effective is um, daily journaling, like stream of consciousness, just get it out. And then also I'll just throw a third one in there that I think is effective, I've found effective is noticing those patterns, like moving through life or synchronicity. So. Um, I don't know if we're having a conversation and you mention a a book to me, okay? And then I go somewhere else and now somebody else is talking about the same book. And then, I don't know, I go somewhere and then now I see the book, like recognizing like, okay, this is trying to get my attention. Why do I keep seeing this or hearing this over and over again? So what about you? What's your personal... um, you know, as much as I would like to journal, that's something that just doesn't, I, I, I do it for a day or two and then I, then I just can't, it's not the way I process. Um, but the, the, the sitting with yourself and, and, and re- reflection, like, um, the end of the day, I like to do a little daily reflection. And at the end of the week, I like to reflect upon the entire week. Um, I think reflection is super important. Um, it allows you to see, you know, where your wins were, like the things that were for you and where they weren't and how you can adjust them so that you could 
maybe make him a win next week or the following week or whatever. Um, yeah. And then, you know, um, spirituality time, right? Like that, that is important too. And that helps with the intuition for me, but like, I, I was looking like, I know that I work on my intuition and I know that it's strong. I, I was, I was looking for your interpretation for my audience mm. because yeah, like, like little, a yeah, li little, little, little tips so that they can start. Because for me, I really feel that listening to your body is, 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 is crucial. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crucial. Um, when, when you're dealing with medical professional, when you're dealing, like what, wh whatever you're doing, like one of the, one of my advocacies is very strong on advocating for yourself. So you need to know what's going on. And I understand that medical practitioners spend a lot of time learning all of the things that they do, but you live in your body mm -hmm. 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And while I respect all of the knowledge that they have, they, they don't know what's going on in your body. So they need to listen to you when you talk about it. And if they're dismissive, find fire that doctor and go find a new one. You have the right. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. So it sounds like you tell me where I'm wrong. What you're asking me when you're saying the simple tips maybe then would be how to get in touch with your body and have that awareness Is that yes. fair to say I, absolutely absolutely I, I would love to talk about that for my audience yeah so I think you know number one is just that simple exercise I know we did it extremely extremely fast but the sitting down or laying down however you are most comfortable and kind of scanning your body and being able to, well, how do my feet feel on the floor? Can I feel the blood pumping through my fingers, getting in touch with the sensations to experience your body rather than always being in your head, right? And thinking and analyzing and creating, coming, coming into your body. Is your back sore? Is it tight? Um, you know, am I feeling pain in my chest? Does my throat feel constricted? Are my shoulders tense? Like starting, um, you know, five minutes, maybe even one minute, literally waking up before you even get out of bed, just doing that quick overall scan and being able to name it, to create that awareness, because the more aware you are, then the better the decisions that you can make. And I hope that's simple enough. And when you were talking about like being in a, a doctor's office and talking about medical diagnosis, even the pause to take three deep breaths, breathing from the belly first will put you back in your body. And in that moment, like after, if you can remember to do those three deep breaths and then checking in, listening to whoever's talking to you, right? And whatever they're saying, now, how do I feel? What's the sensation inside of me as they're talking or showing me whatever they're showing me? And again, the idea is, is to look for that feeling or that sensation of contraction or opening. Am I relaxed? Or am I tense? And even just, did you see how I just did that with my body? Am I yeah. leaning in interested or do I want to cross and get away? Cause it's so, it's so, it's just unconscious. We just do it naturally. You know, like, and, and sometimes how you're reacting when I sat with my oncologist, and he was giving me the treatment plan. He called it a chemotherapy radiation sandwich. And I literally said, I'll have the tuna instead. Like, I just, who wants that, right? Like, and, like my whole body was like, absolutely not. But I, I still felt that that was part of the plan, even though my body was like, no, we don't want to do that. Um, 
so what like when your body doesn't want it but you really feel that you need that how do you how do you reconcile when your intuition is telling you absolutely not so what I'm hearing you say yes because now this is going to get very very nuanced and everybody is going to experience this differently here's what I will say my experience about that is that your body right you're saying didn't want that but what I'm actually hearing you say is my mind didn't want that and so the nuance in this is your mind can think all kinds of things that are not true Right. Valid. And so, so, so valid. <laughs> and so the body is going to respond to that. So when you're having a thought that is not true, like I'm um, this, I'm never going to recover from this. Right. I'm just going to throw something out since we're talking about medical um, situations and cancer or this. I'm never going to recover from this. If that is not true, your body, I, I'm serious, will contract and push away. But the truth will always be experienced as a sensation. That's that opening. So it's not an emotion, just to be clear about intuition. I understand what you're saying about a, a feeling, right? Because I would use the same language, but your emotions always follow your thoughts. Okay, it's a biochemical response in the brain. Okay, all right. But the intuition can be independent of the emotions, right? You can feel like shit and, and hate what's happening and be angry. And yet, if you ask yourself that opening in the chest, the relaxing in the gut, or the opening in the throat will be present. That will be there. So it's not this idea of, oh, um, I just have to change my thinking and I'll feel better. Yes, that is true. But in terms of intuition, it's it's not the same thing as the emotions. You're really looking for those physical sensations, that opening, that closing. Does that make sense? It, yes, it, it absolutely does. The, the the experience that I'm talking about, I'm 16 years removed from it. So my mental imprint on what happened that day could very well be skewed. <laughs> sure. But think about like where you are now, right? And, and again, like those... I don't know. I, cause I just want to, I want to, I'm curious, like if you're going to have that experience really is what's motivating me to ask you this is like something that literally made you angry or sad. Right. And then here's the emotion, but then knowing deep within, but this, this is true. This is what it's going to be. And still being able to experience that peace even though you may be pissed off or unhappy about what's happening. Being diagnosed with cancer is a, a traumatic thing and something that does make people angry, like, like, you know, and afraid, um, and my very good friend, the you know, day of diagnosis, I was very fortunate that I had somebody with me who drove me to the appointment and sat there during the, the discussion. And after the doctor said, you have cancer, I heard Beep! like there was nothing else going on. Um, we went back to her house. She sat me down and she's like, all right, be angry, get it all out. And then tomorrow we're kicking cancer's ass and spending an entire year like navigating appointment after appointment um you know you you go through the whole grief cycle right um and 
I, I guess that I, I did know that there was really nothing I could do except go forward through it. And people are super surprised when I say that I'm actually grateful for the experience because I was able, like I, I survived it, right? Like I'm thriving now. It changed my entire outlook on life. I, I was a little self-centered, a little selfish, um, not motivated to do things. And now, you know, every morning when I wake up, I'm grateful that I that I woke up. And it's super interesting how the when you actually realize that you're mortal (laughs) motivates you to really appreciate things. I'm not saying that happens for everybody, but you know, I've heard other people talk about how, how much more alive they are after they've been faced with their mortality. Yeah. I mean, yeah, makes hundred percent sense to me um, from things I've read and just personal experiences. Um, I think based on what you said, you know, with your friend that was with you who said, all right, get all the emotions out. And then when you do that, we're kicking cancer's ass. And thinking, you know, vividly or imagining maybe would be a better word, that experience for you, if you can, you know, can you see yourself back in that scene with her where she was saying that to you? And can you look or feel inward? Like, what was the sensation in your body when she said those words to you? And yep, and we're kicking cancer's ass. I like... Yeah, I I I'm a fighter. I've always been a fighter and and her saying it out loud beat me to say it out loud. You, you know, I I do think that when you receive a diagnosis like this, every day you decide whether you're going to live or die. And I'm not saying mindset alone will help you through it. Like you know, like, like, but I am saying that your mindset definitely helps determine the outcome. Yes. I have literally seen individuals decide they weren't, they weren't going to do it. Yeah. And they go through the motions of treatment and, but they have already decided that they're not actually fighting for their lives. And that's super, super hard because you 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 want to shake them and tell them what are you doing? But also they are their own human experiencing their their own path and they have the right to decide yeah. or not decide. And you have to love and respect them enough to allow them to make their own choices as an adult no matter how much you uh, disagree with their decision. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you on that. I think, you know, again, those major um, shifts that come from these events like that, just, just suddenly where your whole life is now not what it was just like that change. Um you know, the importance of the mindset work, like you are saying, um, that separation, like, I guess, and, um, you know, for my own personal um, training, as a wayfinder life coach, it would be like the separation of the clean pain, and dirty pain, and the dirty pain as a coach is the things that the mindset of what we like to work on, because that's what creates those emotions, that you're speaking about for better or worse, the stories we tell impact how we feel and affect how we show up. So if I'm going to give up, 
I'm not going to feel motivated. If I think there's no point or there's no use, I'm, you know, going to have a lot of, you know, self pity, a lot of fear, um, all of the human emotions. We cannot control what happens. Right. We can only control how we respond to it. Right. How are you going to think about it? Yep. How, how are you going to think about it? Absolutely. And how you think about it directly correlates to how it will resolve. Yeah. You can it's make like, it exceedingly hard for yourself or you can make it way easier. Yeah. I think about like listening to you say that. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. This is a, a therapy tool and I'm not a therapist. I'm a coach, but um, cognitive behavioral therapy which is this idea like of what is basically what you are saying is that there's circumstances, which are facts, everybody would be in agreement with them. And then there's thoughts and your thoughts come from your interpretation of the circumstance. So you think a certain way and then from the thinking comes the emotions, how you feel and based on the emotions is how you respond is the action. So the idea is, right, we know from just living life, we can all be in the same experience, looking at the same thing and all have very different thoughts about what is actually happening. Yeah, absolutely. Which which is, you know, why uh, police don't like to have eyewitnesses because <laughs> nobody saw the same thing. <laughs> right. Right. Because they saw it from their perspective. Right. And all of their biases and all of their experiences. And, 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 you know, I have definitely had conversations with people and I'm like, I don't like, I was at the same party. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like what you're saying makes zero sense. And, and, and you know, it, and it, then- yeah, it's very interesting the way, and frustrating sometimes, obviously, but it, it's it's super fascinating, and that that could be a whole tree branch for another delay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I think, um, you know, I don't know if we're at time, but what I would say, like to, you know, to tie that in back to specifically with people maybe struggling right now with the cancer diagnosis or some major change in, you know, their medical, um, medical condition is the importance, you know, using that framework, like I just said, of being able to separate the facts out from not what your mind is imagining, you know, what's going to go wrong, um, are automatically kind of going to the worst case scenario, but that mindset work then is being able to challenge yourself to broaden your perspective by entertaining different ways and different things it could mean. Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But 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 you're right. We're 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 closing on time. So okay. um, earlier we talked about the fact that you have a gift for the audience. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, yeah, that's so I have a free five day training. It's an audio training, so you can take it on the go. And it's about confidence, having the confidence while navigating change. It's five simple practices to navigate change with more confidence. Um, And it really is a deep dive, well, five, 10 minutes each recording, but a deep dive into those mindset shifts that can really, really help you ground into um, being more peaceful, feeling more free to make and move in a different way despite the circumstances you may find yourself in. And you can grab that um, for free right on my website. Um, That's learningtofly.org and that's the number two. So again, learningtofly.org and thank you, Tanya, for having me. Oh, Danica, anytime. And I will make sure to put the link in in the show notes so people can can find it. So thank you very much for being here. And bye, everybody. We'll see you next time.